coming up on ATV News. It's not just what, but how much. Find out what one USU football player did to end up behind bars. I'll show you what's been hidden under your feet for the past 15 years. We'll show you how locals are living with the disease that's affecting four times as many people as it did in the 80s. We've got April flowers and April showers. We'll show you how much rain to expect in your upcoming forecast. They're not twins, but tennis and softball had busy weekends. I'll show you who won, who lost, and who's unbeatable. It's all coming up on ATV News. Welcome to ATV News. I'm Natalie Humphreys. And I'm Brock Damjanovich. A Utah State football player has been suspended indefinitely after being arrested for possession of multiple controlled substances. Christopher Copier was arrested on Friday after police found a quarter pound of marijuana and other edibles, 46 ecstasy pills, psychedelic mushrooms, and a bag of Xanax in addition to a 40 caliber handgun. All of these are felony charges. Copier posted bail and is now waiting for his arraignment. Police say it's hard to see these things happen to college students and their futures. Yeah, it's sad. It's, uh, it's unfortunate. I don't know how it started, when it started for him but he's in a lot of trouble now. So if he was playing football, if that was his plan, this is definitely going to have an impact on his future. Police say it's common to see this combination of marijuana products, but a variety of drugs this large is uncommon. What was once a restaurant is soon to be a library. Logan City announced plans to turn a prominent building on Main Street into a new community center and library in last week's municipal council meeting. This is the Emporium, a shopping center in between Center and First North on Main Street. As these signs show, it is now home to a handful of local businesses, but the top floor used to be the Copper Mill restaurant. After the Copper Mill shut down in 2014, the center lost one of its largest businesses. Logan City officials say they hope this new plan will bring in the people it had been missing since then. But one of the local businesses say this plan is a huge mistake. It's just really sad. Logan has extremely high fees, utilities, and this just make them go higher. And we all pay for, you know, the sins of the founding fathers. And it would be nice if they were more cautious. Logan City said the deal should be finished by May 8th. Whether you are a professional bowler or just think you are, a group of USU students found a way to help people just like you make a difference. I bowled a couple of frames to see a, new, a USU student's new idea pick up some momentum. This might not have been a strike, but these bowlers are here to play for something else. This is helping people to live better lives, helping them to improve their health, and so that's what we're looking at. And we think that bowling and having a good time are, are a good way to bring that out in people. This was Pins for Primary Children's, where people came to knock down some pins and raise up some money. We had the option of, well, we could do so many service hours to complete this project, but we said, no, we wanted to make a community impact, we wanted to raise money, we wanted to bring people together was the main thing. Hospitals like Primary Children's can make people think of sadness and sickness. However, the organizers of this event instead decided to focus on supporting a good cause and picking up a spare. It was great to come out and support such a great cause and win great prizes while doing this. Boulders won those prizes by filling out a free ticket, dropping it into the raffle drum, and changing their luck. Yo, know, I'm always the unlucky boy, but today I'm always lucky. I don't know what happened. Don't you know? Businesses all around Logan donated these prizes to the raffle, and they ranged from the peculiar... It says not FDA approved, so <laughs> I don't know. Amazing that. To the victories that didn't even come from the raffle. Tonight's my wife and I's anniversary, and I said to, if I broke 50, we were gonna go get ice cream, and we're getting some ice cream. <laughs> However, the size of the win didn't really matter if you measured in smiles. When they talk to my name, I'm so happy. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Amazing, I don't know. That's so crazy. One student won a fitness bike from Icon Fitness, and the event itself raised over $450. 
There are 422 million adults worldwide living with diabetes. That is according to the World Health Organization, or WHO, which released its first ever study on global diabetes last week. Around the world, diabetes is on the rise. These are clips from a promotional video about diabetes that WHO made. The study found that number, the number of people with diabetes has almost quadrupled since 1980. In 1980, the percentage of people in the world with diabetes was 4.7% and now is at 8.5%. The report also called for worldwide action on treatment and prevention of the disease. While global diabetes is still on the rise, it is also an issue here in the valley. Our Jeffrey Dada talked to some locals to see how they are living with, the di with diabetes. And then I'll just have to poke my finger. Riley said the shots don't bother him anymore because he's kind of used to it. So I just poke my finger, get a little bit of blood. Riley has known he is diabetic since he was six, and he is one of more than 25 million people in the U.S. who has the disease. He says he can usually pick them out. Sometimes you'll see something that maybe other people won't know. So be like, oh yeah, they're diabetic, and go talk to them about it, or things like that. One of the things he notices is an insulin pump, which helps correct insulin levels in the bloodstream. For this amount, I need to do two, two and a half units. Riley has type 1 diabetes, which means his body does not produce enough insulin. The other major type of diabetes is type 2, which means the body produces insulin, but can't use it well. I mean, they'd get up in the morning and they'd have soda for breakfast. Like. This is Dr. Maloof. He frequently treats and even diagnoses patients for diabetes. It's hard because in a somewhat real sense, it's... It's a, it's a life-changing thing, I mean, and it kills a lot of people. Dr. Maloof said that one of the early signs of diabetes is extreme thirst. This leads to a lot more water drinking, a lot more trips to the bathroom, and potentially a lot more weight loss. What your body is trying to do is to control the, the sugar in your system. So the sugar is too high, and your body says, i got to get rid of this. And so your kidneys go into overtime and start kicking a lot of that out. Dr. Maloof said that a healthier lifestyle in general can help slow the prominence of the disease. If we control our, our diets and, and get regular exercise and use moderation, a lot of things we, we tend not to have as many health problems in general, not just with diabetes in particular. So right now this is saying a 190. Riley said that if a diabetic person is healthy, they should be fine. As long as the person is taking care of themselves, they should be able to live as normal life as anybody else. That was Jeffrey Dada reporting. Malouf said that U the U.S. is second only to Mexico in the number of people with diabetes in the world. When we come back, we'll show you the maze that's right under your feet. And see the latest technology that could be coming to a classroom near you. So, I got this new family. And I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy. Live with a human for a while, and you get to know a few things. Like, I know she does strange tricks for no treats. But the one thing I will never for the life of me know is how she gets so tiny and inside that box. Natalie, how do you get so tiny? Live Students across the valley now have a better understanding of computer science. The Hack USU event gave middle, high school, and college students the opportunity to learn about computer science. Workshops were also available for those who needed to brush up on their skills. The event is mainly geared towards middle and high school students, but any student who lives in the valley and goes to school can come and have fun. People can kick out a really cool hack or a really cool app within 12 hours. Um, even the kids um, in the younger generations in, in junior high and high school, there's really smart kids that that really pick up on this stuff really easy. For more information about the club, visit www.hackusu.org. When you walk on Utah State's campus, you are walking on a maze of underground tunnels you may have never known about. Our, Je our Taylor Murray takes you five feet below to show you one of USU's best kept secrets. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Absolutely nothing. I think I heard of it once. I've heard about them in passing, but that's about it. These students had no idea they've been walking on top of these underground tunnels for their entire college career. And it's a fairly simple reason why the tunnels were built. Our steam pipe was just buried in the ground. And so if we ever had to do a repair or anything, we had to dig up, find it, and then repair it. And it was a lot of work. I met with Olsen to find out more about where the tunnels lead to. 
here we are at our central energy plant and we built these are the tunnels that were originally built um, this goes out to engineering down to geology he went on to tell me how the tunnels have extended throughout campus the past 15 years including the new business building as well as the library there's two miles worth of these tunnels with chilled water on one side and high pressure steam on the other to heat and cool the classrooms Aggie students sit in. But most students have no idea what these tunnels are for. Probably moving the cadavers. They have cadavers here. I really think it's the minions that all the prof professors have. Um, they never show themselves. That's why they're always in the tunnels. Some kind of student mischief. I don't know. <laughs> However, entrances like these make it hard for students to cause mischief. For the most part, we've got everything locked down and secure, so it's, we haven't had a lot of issues with it. Even though most students don't know how much Olson helps our campus, he still finds satisfaction in his work. If they're comfortable in their classrooms and we're doing our job. Underground, Taylor Murray, ATV News. While students don't have open, have open access to the tunnels, Olson said they are more than happy to give tours to anyone interested. There's some new technology that will save the school and you money. Items such as touchpads and computer screens were on display at the technology fair on Tuesday. Both on and off campus corporations such as HP and Dell showed off their latest, latest gadgets and improvements. The items on display could end up being used in college classes and students say that's a good thing. I think it's a great resource that, you know, both as teachers and as students that, that we have to be able to um, you know, further our education and to be able to uh, complete our assignments and, and do what we need to do. For technology and security tips, visit it.usu.edu. If you feel sore after working out or suffer from aching muscles, you may want to check out this new alternative for easing the pain. This is liquid nitrogen, and this is the chamber where it is released. Here at Cache Valley Cryotherapy, people can come to use this machine that is said to get rid of muscle and joint pain. But how does liquid nitrogen do that? Well, the gas comes out at around 32 degrees Fahrenheit, cooling the skin and telling the brain to keep the core of the body warm. This causes the blood to circulate through the limbs, give extra oxygen, and flush out the inflammation in the body. Austin Esplin owns the clinic and says having the clinic and helping his clients has been rewarding. I think it's really cool when they come back to me and say that they just felt so much relief, you know, from it that it was, to me, I think that's really cool, you know, like not having to take your pain pills or, you know, being able to go out and do stuff out in the yard playing with your kids. In fact, he says he has clients who have decreased their dose of pain pills or have stopped using them altogether. And some of his clients even say they get a better night's sleep. It really helps my sleep. I sleep a ton better. Um, I usually don't sleep very good, but I know after I come here, I usually sleep all the way through the night. The person spends just three minutes in the chamber, and Esplan says the whole process of filling out paperwork and getting the treatment only takes about 15 minutes. Tess Griffith, ATV News. When we come back, ATV's Taylor Condi will have your Cash Valley weather report. The current temperature in Logan is 57 degrees. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving.
I was surprised by all that rain we got this morning. Yeah, oh totally. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was beautiful, but don't get me wrong. One thing I'm scared about is an even longer winter, and I'm hoping that's not in our future. I mean, I'll have to show you. Let's take a look at this national radar. So as you can see right now going on in the south, um, there is some, there's a lot of heavy precipitation going on, especially in um, Alabama, Mississippi, and the panhandle of Florida. Um, and it's going to be going on into Georgia. And then also up in the Ohio River Valley, there's a frost advisory. Um, and then going on into um, the southern part of California and Nevada, um, there has been a high wind advisory, up to 50 miles an hour winds have been reported. Um, and then actually in Utah and Colorado, even though it's April, there has been a winter advisory reported. Let's, look at let's take a look at the state radar. Um, as you can see right now, there's a lot of heavy precipitation going on, um, especially across northern Utah and the Wasatch Front, and it's going to be here for the next couple of days. Let's look at the seven-day forecast. So, um, right now, today, we had a lot of rain when we woke up this morning. Um, we have a high of 61 for the day and a low of uh, 43. Um, and then tomorrow, where it's going to cool off, we're going to be in, um, we're going to, it's going to be 50 degrees. Um, and there's actually going to be a chance of snow um, overnight going into Friday as well. And then it's going to be the same 50 degrees um, and there's a chance of snow at, the, at night as well. And then Saturday is going to get a little bit better. There's still a chance of um, some showers, um, but it's going to be 56 degrees. And then going on into your, the rest of your weekend on Saturday, um, it's going to be 57. Um, and by then, the storm will pass. And Monday, it's going to be back up in the 60s. And then Tuesday is going to be beautiful. It's almost going to be 70 degrees. Um, so this weekend, make sure you go out and have some fun. Um, what's going on in sports, guys? Thanks, Taylor. Our varsity gymnastics may be over, but our club team is ready for nationals. Absolutely, and we'll show you how they're gearing up for the competition when we come back. Amy's got a full lineup for sports. That's right. Softball today, had a three-game series against San Jose State. That means many of the... I'll show you how they fared, and men's tennis is doing well. I'll show you how well when we return. Today, one out of every four American kids is Hispanic. That means many of the future doctors who will care for us, the engineers who will build our cities, the scientists and entrepreneurs of our country can be your kids. We all know how hard it is for you to send them to college. This is why we want you to know you are not alone. And every day, more people support you to make it happen. Many support you. And the Hispanic Scholarship Fund helps you prepare, plan, and pay for your kids' college education. Learn more at hsf.net. I grew up in the housing projects of Cleveland. I didn't even know that life could be any better than it was. Education for me has been a way to get away from the agony of what was normal life. I want to be able to impact the community, not just look back on where I came from, but to reach back to where I came from and pull some people up with me. My name is David, and I am your dividend. year in a row, Utah State Gymnastics Club is preparing for nationals, which are this weekend. Our Emily Duke sat in on their final practice before they left for Sacramento to find out what it takes to be an Aggie gymnast. Around and around and around. <laughs> Tyson Grover doesn't let it get him down when he doesn't nail his pommel horse routine on the first try. Even if it's tempting. I always have to lean on my left arm. That's what I was saying before. Left arm, left arm. Just because I always lean on my right arm, and so it makes me not travel forward. It makes me fall off. But even when he does fall, he still loves the event. Right here, Paul Morse. My baby. But his role in the club is not just as an athlete. He's also a coach. Nope, you didn't get in compression enough. And he and the other coaches do everything they can to help their teammates get ready to compete. It's more mental than physical. Um, because I can teach you how to do all the skills in the world physically wise, but if your mental game isn't there, it's a downfall. Hicks practiced his parallel bars dismount to get it perfect for competition. 
That was more pop. He and four teammates will compete Thursday through Saturday in Sacramento, almost all competing in all around. You do a floor routine, a vault routine, a P-bar routine, a pommel horse routine, and rings, and high bar. Utah State Gymnastics Club took 17th at nationals last year, but it's the friendships that they're confident will stick. It's definitely a very social club. Hey. They love to tease each other. How you doing? And say it feels like a family. Come here often? They're excited to compete as friends at nationals. It's just been a good a good way to get to know a lot of people. I feel like yeah, yeah, one of the best yeah, yeah, ways to use my time. Emily Dew, ATV News. That's absolutely crazy. Uh, some of those, some of the things that they can do physically are absolutely mind-boggling to me. I, I can't even comprehend. Yeah, I uh, used to dance in high school, but I never could flip backwards. It just so watching them, it was just crazy. I dance, but not in public. <laughs> Be sure to check out uh, our Facebook page this weekend for some updates on how those Aggies are doing. We'll have the link available at the end of our broadcast. So how are varsity sports going, Amy? Well, let's take a look. In tennis, the women won against Air Force on Friday, but they weren't able to keep the momentum going for their match on Sunday against number 45, New Mexico. Here, Maggie O'Meara got this point, but was unable to beat Ludwig Bergwire. New Mexico clinched the match, and here, Nini Gunsler was unable to finish her match against Emily Oliver because the New Mexico Lobos swept the Aggies 4-0. The next match for the women is Friday at Colorado State. Some exciting things are happening in men's tennis. On Friday, the men reached a school record of 19 wins in a 4-0 win against Nevada. They went into Saturday's game to break that record. For a fun little match, Aggie's head, Aggie head coach, Clancy Shields, beat his brother, Luke Shields, who was Fred Snow's coach. Aggie freshman, Luis Lopez, shined in his singles match against Yosef Hassan, and he won his match after just two sets. Romai Ugarti played Fresno State's Jacob Keppelman and won his match with two 6-1 to one sets. The Aggies beat Fresno State 4-0 to zero and three singles matches like this one with freshman Jack Swindle were left unfinished. Our guys, we have a greater goal than the match we're playing today and they know that, that in the back of their heads and, and they just play really hard. The team is 6-0 in the Mountain West Conference, and they are hoping to be the first Aggie team to win a Mountain West title. It's a great team. I love playing for it. I enjoy every second on the court, and I hope that we can keep rolling and win the conference because that's our end goal. The Aggies will play on Friday at home against UNLV at 11. In softball, the women lost against San Jose on Friday, 9-3. to three. But Saturday, the Aggies game, the Aggies came back with a win, 8-6, to six, against the Spartans. Number 21, Noelle Johnson, scored for the Aggies with this home run. And Victoria Saucedo scored here with this hit that sent the ball over the fence. This is her first home run at Utah State after coming here from Hawaii. The junior pitcher, April Brown, pitched a great game to block the Spartans from scoring. For her to come back and throw like she did today is huge for the rest of the season. Despite runs like this from Serena Jaramillo, the Aggies lost again on Sunday against San Jose State. Still, this is the first time the softball team has had a winning record in 20 years. That means they have more wins than losses for the season. We're feeling really good, um, kind of like getting in the swing of things. Um, offensively, defensively, everything's kind of falling, to, uh, falling into place. Um, we're really excited for the upcoming games. Tonight, they play at BYU, and this weekend, they're headed to California to play against Fresno State. Back to you guys. Thanks, Amy. You see all of them over campus, but find out what these sculptures are doing here at Utah State. And one man's trash is another student's treasure. We'll show you how coming up later. If you drive buzzed, 
it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is dr Here at the GED Pep Talk Center, we have pep talkers standing by to get you motivated for your GED diploma. Text the name Terry to 69222 for a sympathetic pep talk. You show people what you really are. Or for a gentle pep talk, text the name Deborah. You know, you're going to make people very proud of you. And if that's not enough, text the name Danny for an extreme pep talk. Prove everyone wrong. Show them you're the boss. Get your GED pep talk and find free GED classes. Text the name of the person you want a pep talk from to 69222. You may have noticed these sculptures on campus, uh, but maybe you've even thought they're a little strange. Our Tori, our Tori Green took a stroll around USU to find out their meaning and figure out why they're here. You walk by these every day, but do you ever take the time to stop and look at them? Utah State has 36 sculptures on its campus. You might wonder why they are here. Public sculpture helps to beautify a university's landscape. It helps the university campus not look so boring with building after building after building. The sculptures are spaced all over campus and they can be a learning tool. A lot of times the public sculptures across campus can help people remember where certain locations are on the campus. Some students love the art but don't understand what it has to do with USU. There's hardly any like Aggie themed sculptures. I feel like that would be pretty cool to see around. Believe it or not, every single one of the sculptures on display has a connection to USU. And that connection seems to draw attention to one sculpture in particular. My favorite sculpture is, uh, we call it the french fries by the library. It's those big yellow ones. Um, I don't know, it's just kind of stand out, it like stands out and I think it really makes the library stand out. This seems to be a lot of students' favorite sculpture here on campus. They call it the french fry, but it's really called the snafu. Art can mean something different to everyone, so these sculptures are... Something to feast your eyes upon and just make your day walking around campus more interesting. That's why I love these sculptures. They just... They don't fit any particular rules beyond just do whatever your imagination tells you. Some of these sculptures were made by professors on campus, others by famous Utah artists. For some, it doesn't matter who made it or why, but... What really matters is like what was going on in here for the artist. Like what was he or she feeling? What was going on in their life? What does it mean to them? The university is working on plaques for each sculpture so it shows the artist's name, when it was made, and probably a sentence or two explaining why it is on the campus. Tori Green, ATV News. Students got together again for the last recycled fashion show at USU. Using shopping bags and lots of glue, Haley Larson was able to make a 1950s dress for the final recycled fashion show and other creative events hit the stage like this cardboard robot, this glass dress, and this plated dress. Students used cell phones to vote for their favorite design from each era. Though Larson's design didn't win because of some tough competition like this guy in bubble wrap, she was able to learn how to make something, like how difficult it is, like what an art it is to make clothes, but too, like how to make things functional. Thanks for joining us on this edition of ATV News. Catch all of the latest editions of ATV News on our Facebook page. Have a great day, Aggies. Center. Jerry Stiller speaking. Your level seven in your face, pep talk. I can keep pushing. Believe me, I'm good at it. 
Once you've got your GED diploma, you'll feel so good about yourself. You come. Mr. Trejo, can I transfer this guy to you? He needs something a little more... Persuasive? Yes! Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. Thank you.